Nunu, willkommen et et Kefferen. Mein Name ist Michael. Hello, apologies for the poor Anglo-Saxon, but welcome to a new loaf about. Today we're at the ancient 6th century royal township of Adgefren. There's been a settlement here since the Bronze Age over 5,000 years ago, however the real importance came in the 6th century when the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon kings of Northumbria built one of the many and arguably the most important royal residents here. They would administer justice and receive tribute here from the local area. For over a hundred years it was the focal point for historical events and in the 7th century Bishop Paulinus preached Christianity to the king and queen, thereafter baptising his Christian converts in the nearby River Glen. Many kings ruled from here, including Athelfrith, Aldred and Oswald, who was later canonised as St Oswald. The palace was eventually attacked by Cadwallon, King of Britons, and King Penda of Mercia, and by the 8th century was no more. Anglo-Saxons are basically Northern Europeans, sort of Danish and German, and the majority of you out there will be descended from them. Certainly our language comes from them. And recently um, my sister done a, a blood research on our family's origins and with my dad being a Londoner and my mum a borderer, we had a strange mix of uh, sort of Anglo-Saxon, Norman, Celtic, Norse and Finland as well of all places. And it basically were Europeans and some of us seem to forget that nowadays and we all came here as immigrants via boats. Interesting and historical though Ad Gefren is, it's not the objective of our walk today, but as this hill is. This is Yevering Bell. Yevering Bell, or Hill of the Goats, not a Masonic playground by the way was constructed approximately 2,500 years ago. Other than that, we know little of the people that lived there, whether it was a temporary residence or some kind of meeting site we just don't know. The walk actually starts from our car park on the side of the road where you can actually walk the Adgethrin Trail as well. And from here you just take the track and you head up to the west of the hill between Newton Tors and Yeavering Bell itself. And I've been met by Sun Glen, and we're going to head off up this track. So, as you can see, I've got company today. And I think the buzzword at the moment today is Glen, because <laughs> we've got the River Glen, we've got Glendale, and we've got Glen, my son. So we're walking up this track, and this track goes between Yeaver and Bell, Newton Tors, it goes all the way over to Heathpool, and then you cut through from Heathpool over to the Border Ridge, then over to Yetham. It's a bit windy today, and there's a promise of showers as well, so I don't know if you can hear me or not, there might be not be as much sort of commentary. Hooray! <laughs> I hear you shout, but we'll certainly get some nice shots from the top. I'll get Glenn to repeat what he just said, but he says up there is one of the windiest places in the UK. <laughs> microclimate. Microclimate, or at least it will be today. <laughs> Tip 
two over here. And this is where we turn off the track and head up, head up the path between the Tors and Evering Bell. I see they've been doing a little bit of planting in here, which is good to see. There's a bit of birch and a bit of oak. And on this hill, there's actually areas of ancient woodland. And this is apparently some of the only woodland remaining from the woods that would originally cover this area, you know, some old oaks and scrub. And it's very natural for, the, for all the animals and creatures that live in the area. And at least it's not been burnt down and destroyed, you know, as the rest of the hills have been for grouse shooting, you know. And it's good to see. But I've been up this hill many times and I've been up it in the middle of winter as well and running over the top I came over the other side and jumped into a drift and it came up to there but I think Glenn you've been up this hill before haven't you? Yeah I have. And uh, was that in the winter? Uh, I can't remember when it was, it felt like a winter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was in his shorts and t-shirt he was saying but I'm sure he made a quick exit off the top because it would be really cold and windy. So we've cut up between the two hills and we've come halfway up this path and we've now come to a fork in the path where we turn left to go up Evering Bell and you can go straight on here and keep on this path and go all the way to Ruler Common and Ruler itself or you can turn right over the stile and head up onto Newton Tors. And Glenn and I actually done that last year because we wanted to, to see the sunset and we quite literally came over the top to see the sunset and managed to grab one picture. So we've come up the gap between the two hills, we've come round the back and we're coming up the final pool into the, the fort itself. And the entrance to the fort is actually pointing direct out to the Hedgehope Hill which is covered in snow today and the Cheviot which is covered in snow and cloud and the theory was that there was some sort of ritual or something that, you know regarding this but I personally think it was just pure coincidence the entrance being almost exactly opposite Hedgehope. So the stone encampment was actually made out of andesite pink pink stone and the walls themselves were about four meters wide by two meters high so it must have looked really imposing to anybody coming along the valley or really impressive you know I think um, in those days the family would want to be held in high esteem so you know if you're coming along the valley and look up and just saw this gleaming pink stone it must have looked really impressive so we're coming through the entrance now and the entrance is built around this side because of the steep slopes on the other side and if you look around you know you'd be able to get up here either on foot or by horse or by horse and cart
and there's a lot of indentation here in the land it might be hard to pick up the camera but you can see where my shadow is or the shadow of the hill and that's about the size the size of it and if I look around you can get an indication of the kind of scale of this place and in its heyday there were believed to be 130 roundhouses up here although they say a lot of them weren't actually occupied so they may have been you know for storage or ritual but they're dotted all over the place and Yeaven Bell's actually made up of two tops and it's so big I can barely see Glen on the second top on the east side I'm waiting on Glen getting a few photographs and panorama to the front of the hill. There's photography video Facebook page. I'll put the link in the description below. Although it's quite windy and cold, it's just a great day to be up near Ring Bell. So it's been a great walk and we're about to drop off the hill here, off the front of the hill quite literally, back down to the car, but it's been a fantastic walk and the views off here are absolutely stupendous and you can see exactly why they, they built the fort here. So if you've liked the video give us another thumbs up, go and have a look at Glenn's page, give it a like too, please come back, subscribe there'll be more videos coming along very soon. come across a couple of the wild goats from the ancient wild goat, goat herd which actually descend from Neolithic times from goats that were domesticated then but these wild goats you can usually smell them before you see them and we're actually getting fairly close to them here which is quite unusual but we'll try not to disturb them too much <laughs> 